it, it, it annoys me when I read um, lazy journalism, which is easy to come by. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm probably in your country too, um, where it refers to those who are opposed to the regime change policy of the president as anti-war. Well, this is true if they are pacifist, which none of them are. Of the ones I know, and I know most of them personally, it has to be said they are pro-war, actively pro-war, but on the other side. Um, I'll give you an example from yesterday's New York Times. Mr. Ramsey Clark, who used to be the Attorney General of Lyndon Johnson, and who keeps mentioning this fact as if he should be proud of it. If I had been Lyndon Johnson's Attorney General, yeah. I would keep it a secret. I would change my name, I would have plastic surgery, I would leave the country. But he boasts of it. Well, he's, he is probably the, if the anti-war movement in America has one single person as its voice and public leader, it's him. He turns up in Baghdad, he's a lawyer obviously, to join the defense team of Saddam Hussein. Okay, Saddam Hussein should have a good lawyer. Uh, I insist upon it. Saddam's lawyers have been saying on the first count in the indictment, that he did not order the murder and torture of several hundred young men and boys in a Shia village outside Baghdad where a, a, an attempt had been made to assassinate him. They, they say this did not happen. Ramsey Clark turns up and says, it should have happened. His first remark is, at this time Saddam Hussein was fighting a war with a Shia country, Iran. You can't have assassination attempts, you have to be firm yeah. on these occasions. It could have been said by Graziani. Um, it, it, not to, to mention the fact that Saddam Hussein had invaded Iran, had begun that war, in which we think perhaps a million and a half people were killed. Well, this is fascism. And it's uh, from the leader of the American anti-war movement. It's a disgrace and nobody says anything about it. It's I who am supposed to explain myself. People say to me, are you serious? You think that Saddam Hussein should have been overthrown? Are you mad? Are you wicked? Are you evil? Are you drunk? Ah, but Ramsey Clark, good man. Get in there. Justify atrocity, torture, genocide, aggression, dictatorship. With a pure conscience. My other well-known opponent, probably better known perhaps in Europe, is um, George Galloway, member of the British House of Commons, member of the Bath Party, certainly paid member of the, <laughs> certainly paid member of the Bathist elite and member of the Oil for Food clientele that was organized uh, by uh, Mr. Tariq Aziz, friend of the Pope, the last Pope. Well, um, Mr. Galloway was recently in Syria, where he described all the uh, bombings, uh, executions, decapitations, uh, blowing up of mosques, um, of, the, of the offices of the Red Cross, of the United Nations, and all these in Baghdad, as martyrdom operations, praised them all, and did this uh, specifically as the guest of and defender of um, the human toothbrush figure of uh, Bashir al-Assad, the cretinous little dauphin of uh, Syria, the last Syrian Ba'athist leader, as it, as it will soon turn out. Well, what am I to say about this? This is anti-war? This is socialism? This is liberalism? No, it's fascism. It's, it's power worship worship of the most uh, unbridled kinds of power uh, by the most unpleasant kinds of people. But Mr. Galloway's press coverage says he's a maverick, he's a, a David confronting the American Goliath, um, that he's a dissident, that he's a dissident, which is a term of honor to me, that he was expelled from the Labour Party, of which I'm a member, for his opposition to the Iraq war, it, the Labour Party is full of people who are opposed to the Iraq war. He, George Galloway, as a matter of fact, was expelled from the Labour Party for advocating the shooting of British soldiers. That's a slightly different position from being critical of the Gulf War. So you see what one is up against, I mean, culturally and politically, and journalistically.